All right. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm really excited to uh, have everybody with us today for another gorgeous Tech Partners Series webinar. Today's event is all about how to balance automation and personalization and customer experience. This is a, a super trendy topic. Obviously, there's a lot of tools now um, being developed that make it really easy to leverage automation, which is key as you scale as a brand. Um, but also, you, you can't go too far on the automation side where you're you're really missing out on that personalization piece. And so um, we've assembled a panel today of, of experts in the industry whose platforms or services make it really easy to strike that perfect balance of uh, uh, automation and personalization. It's great to see uh, Ren in the audience, uh, who's uh, with uh, Hello Tushy, which is a, a famous today company. So it's great to see so many people tuning in already. Um, we're going to uh, kick things right, uh, off right away. This is a 90 minute webinar and I'll go over the logistics here in a second. Um, everybody can see my screen, I hope. Yeah, so uh, just a quick rundown of the Gorgeous Tech Partner series. So we do several webinars each month, um, which uh, will cover different topics. So we've done things like mobile commerce best practices, loyalty and retention uh, strategy, um, BFCM best practices. And the idea is to pick some topical theme that's happening in the industry, we bring on our valued uh, technology partners whose product can really speak to that specific topic. And then they come on and they share best practices and wisdom with, with all of uh, the brands that tune in. Um, we're typically having you know, four to 500 people sign up for these and typically one to 200 people join us on air. And so this month you can see it's all about automation and personalization. Really excited to be joined by Tivon, who's the CEO and co-founder of Tone Messaging, which was recently acquired by Attentive Mobile. Uh, we have Miles, who's with the, the Klevu team. We have Ben, who's uh, only a few blocks away from me here in Toronto, and he's with Ada. And then we have Sarah um, with the, the Alloy team. And so in terms of uh, what we're asking from you, really, um, these events are, are developed for you, brands, uh, in the e-commerce ecosystem. So it's in your best interest to ask as many questions as possible so you can get as much information as you can. We're going to be posting polls throughout that were provided by our, the partners with us today. And so these poll questions are intended to gather information from you um, that we can you know, use to, in, in our follow-up um, to give you any information that you're looking for. So all that we ask is that you engage, you ask questions, and ultimately, if you can give feedback, that's also awesome as well. You're not, going, uh, you're not leaving today with just a bunch of great uh, wisdom and information on uh, the different partners' platforms. You're also going to be going away with a bunch of great prizes. Anyone who's ever attended a gorgeous hosted webinar knows that we we threw up some big prizes um, as, a, as a small thank you for all of the people tuning in. And so you can see all the different prizes that we have up for grabs today. How this works is uh, we have five different speakers and they each get a 15 minute speaking slot. At the end of each speaking slot, I'm gonna very scientifically scroll, scroll through the live attendees with my eyes closed and pick one lucky winner. Uh, we'll take note of that and then we'll uh, reach out to you within the next few days to. Uh, get your shipping address so we can send off these awesome prizes. So the key there is if you want to be eligible for one of these prizes, you need to be live with us on air. So make sure that you stay tuned throughout the entire webinar. We do appreciate that. I love seeing the live chat already blown up. Uh, cool. Um, so without further ado, really happy to welcome a, a friend and a partner of ours, Tivon, who's the CEO and co-founder of Tone Messaging. Uh, Tivon, I'll, uh, I'll let you get your, your uh, screen up and running and I'll give you a quick intro. Awesome, and I'll uh, just stop sharing my screen. There you go. Sweet. Awesome, all right, all the other speakers, I'll let you guys jump off stage and we'll, uh, we'll be talking with you guys in a little bit. Awesome. Cool. All right, let me know when Fine, you go ahead. Full. Yeah, we can see it. All Sounds right, good. so yeah, yeah. So Tivon, as I mentioned, is CEO and co-founder of Tone Messaging. His fun fact, and we do fun facts for all of our, our presenters, is that you can find him kiteboarding during his free time. He's a serial entrepreneur, and while growing his e-commerce bicycle startup to 30,000 customers and millions in sales, his team developed that or discovered that texting was the best way to answer customer questions, and that's really what led to Tone. Really excited to have you with us again, Tivon, and the floor is all yours. Thank you. So excited to be here. Uh, thank you for including me in a lot of these, Chris. These are always fun. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how customers are using SMS to deliver personalized CS at scale. Uh, it's something you can do yourself if you leverage two-way text messaging. It's also something that we make super easy at Tone. Um, and as Chris mentioned, we were recently acquired about three weeks ago 
by the leader in SMS marketing and e-commerce, uh, uh, Attentive Mobile. And uh, that's a good segue into the first stat I wanna share with you guys, because it's actually an attentive stat, and it's something that I really wanted to use uh, for the better part of the last six months. Um, and I actually had to get acquired by Attentive in order to start using this. And that is that 70% of shoppers actually want to receive uh, support via SMS from brands. But if you think about your experiences as a consumer, that's not really a thing. Like most brands, for whatever reason, maybe manpower, maybe technology, aren't really delivering personalized support via SMS right now. And it's kind of like everyone has this easy pass in their car, uh, but for some reason, brands are making everyone go through this slow cash payment toll lane. Um, so what we do at Tone is simple. We actually give everyone that easy pass to start texting two-way with brands. Um, and in doing so, we build a personal texting relationship with pretty much every single customer uh, that wants one with a brand. Uh, we do that by automating two-way text messaging using AI and our own people in the background that answer inbound messages uh, for brands. Our average response time across every single message across thousands of brands is under three minutes. And our average ROI across all brands is 9x, although we've seen, depending on AOV, you can get up into the 200s uh, and 300s. Um, at present, we've done up to 7 million conversations since inception in 2018, and we've driven over $50 million in revenue for the brands that we serve. So the way that I think about what we do uh, in simplistic terms is for the buying journey, when a customer is first thinking about buying from your brand, the first thing that we do is we give them the confidence to actually uh, make that purchase by saying, I'm a human, I'm here, um, whatever question you have, I'm just going to make sure that you can, you can trust our brand, you have the confidence to make this purchase. That personal relationship that we build from the beginning actually has downstream compounding effects for repeat purchases. Not only because the customer says, oh, I've got a friend at this brand that I actually want to buy from, um, but also because it that uh, personal channel that we've created actually makes it easy for them to ask subsequent, subsequent questions that they might have, you know, if they're buying an accessory or, um, you know, the same product again. And then finally, there's kind of this paradigm right now in marketing and support where you do a lot of work up on the front end. You say, buy, 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 here's a discount. We really want you to be a customer. And then when it comes time for the actual support moment, when the customer has a problem post-purchase, it takes hours, days, or sometimes never to actually get a response from the brand. So we changed the paradigm by making it just as easy to talk to a brand, a brand when you're trying to buy something as when you're on your fifth purchase or when you have something broken and you need some support. So that's Tone in a nutshell. Quick note about why we joined forces with Attentive. So as many of you know, many of you are already using Attentive. Uh, Attentive is the most comprehensive text messaging solution for brands. Uh, we have over 3,000 brands uh, in retail and e-commerce that are currently leveraging Attentive for SMS marketing, sending over a billion messages a month now and generating <clears throat> on average 18.5% of total e-commerce revenue. Now, the reason it made sense for us to start working with Attentive is because when we heard that billion messages a month number, we did some quick calculations. So we know the average rate at which people respond to an outbound message. And we said, that's hundreds of millions of conversations that we could be starting. Um, and that's lots of found revenue lots of gains in retention, and a big push forward in the paradigm shift we're trying to create, whereby we think that uh, customers should all have friends at brands that they can text with at a moment's notice. So into our actual customers and what we're doing in terms of personalization. Um, so this is one of my favorite brands. Uh, it's called Third Love, and they sell women's intimates online, bras, uh, panties, lingerie. Um, and you can imagine how personal of a sale this is. It's actually a really hard sale to complete online, right? Because people are used to going to fitting rooms. They have their favorite brand. They know how they fit in a Victoria's Secret, but they don't know how they fit, you know, in a third love. So the questions that we get at the top of the funnel all the time are, do your sizes fit accurately? Uh, what size should I get? You know, this is my body type. So in this case, on the right-hand side, you can see the customer ask, are your sizes fairly accurate? I have broad shoulders. And we give a really personal response in a couple of minutes. It says, our sizes are accurate. But if you want to be sure, our fit finder will ask you questions to determine your perfect fit. And if you're still unsure, let me know and we'll look together. And then we go on to explain, excuse me, that the return uh, and exchange policy is really easy. And the customer ends up being so thrilled that we gave them that personal support. They say, I can't thank you enough for making this a great experience. You've put me at ease and like I'm making the right decision. So the personalization in this case really instills the confidence uh, in the customers making uh, the purchase decision. 
Um, and we do that thousands of times a day for all of our merchants. A little bit further down the funnel is one example of how automation enables you to scale after the personalization moment. So in this case, it's a brand called Pop of Leather. They sell beautiful leather bags. You should check them out. And um, in this case, we already closed the sale with the customer by giving some personalized support early on, explaining um, our process for making the bags and the difference in between the differences between the different leathers. So when the customer finally received it, um, we had already kind of primed the pump and gotten them really excited about what they were going to expect, under promising and over delivering. So when they got it, the customer said, "Today I received all my orders, and without a doubt, it was Christmas. The quality of leather and work workmanship." is the best. Nothing compares to your products. I actually was so stunned by the quality of my order. Thank you so much for this amazing experience, a customer for life. Now, in this case, uh, across all of our brands and for brands that are really high volume, we're getting hundreds, if not thousands of these types of messages all the time. And it would be really hard to manually create a response to every single message that says your products are awesome. If your products are good, then you're going to get a lot of these messages. So this is an example of something that we can actually totally automate. So in this case, we say something like, so glad you like the products. Thank you so much for the positive feedback and support, so on and so forth. And by the way, we're here if you have any more questions, if you want to keep buying. Um, so in this case, we actually just leverage our agents and AI to reduce the CX burden. For a brand like this, we're reducing the actual burden on their support team anywhere from 10 to up to 50% uh, by just handling all of the top line questions and comments that people have. Now, the thing that we figured out after maybe a year or two of doing this was that when you combine personalization and automation in the right way, that's actually how you create a really sticky um, solution and uh, create lifetime, lifelong, really loyal customers. So one of my favorite brands, uh, we've been working with them since almost the beginning. They might be customer number 70. Uh, this is Usual Wines. And they have what's called, uh, they innovated this themselves. They call it the wine hotline. So anywhere on their mobile site, you can find a number uh, that is a tap to text number. So when you tap it, it actually opens up a conversation and you're texting with a human in minutes. Um, but what they've also done is they've put a little card in every single box that says, if you'd like to order more wine, if you have questions, just send us a text to this number. And they've been doing this for years with us. Um, and so here's an example of a, an experience that shows quite a bit of loyalty. Um, so in July of 2019, here on the right-hand side, you can see that we actually closed an order by giving people an easy way to check out just in text message. And then it looks like it took almost two years. The customer was happily receiving repeat orders over that time. Uh, but then almost two years later, the customer had a, an issue. And instead of going through a different support channel, instead of sending an email, instead of doing any live chat, they actually just found Sarah at Usual Wines in their phone. And they sent a text message and said, hey, I've got a question. Uh, sadly, my shipment showed up and the bottles were broken. What next? And of course, we jumped in in a couple of minutes and um, solved their problem, shipped them out new wine. Um, so what's interesting to note here is that uh, first we gave them a really automated solution to uh, complete their order. Then we let them know that uh, we were a personal a person here. Uh, that could help them. So it actually made sense them, for them to come back to this channel. It wasn't an automated, a totally automated system. Um, so they, they they sort of saved in their mind a, a footnote, like, okay, I'm going to come back here. And then finally, when they did have that moment, uh, that first experience was so strong, they said, oh, I should go to the text message channel. Really, really powerful here. Um, and this is really what we look for, uh, we look to do with all of our merchants. So once you have all of these customers that have started personal relationships with you. We think of this as the best cohort to market to of all time, right? Because there are people who have actively told you, I love your brand. I'm buying from you person on the text message chain. Um, and that's really, really powerful. So what we do is through our integrations, we actually make sure that our brands can leverage uh, these personal relationships. So one example is um, taking your ESP and taking the segment of customers who have had a positive experience on SMS and have purchased from you on SMS and doing a special onboarding flow in email for anyone who purchases over SMS, knowing that those people have had a very personal experience with you. So with that, I want to uh, encourage all of you to start using two-way SMS marketing if you are not. If you already are, leveraging the, a combination of personalization, often in the front end, and automation throughout the process to actually make it scalable. Um, 
And of course, if you want help doing that, uh, Tone Messaging is here to help. You can go to ToneMessaging.com and schedule a demo with us. Um, and not only can you use our two-way messaging capabilities, but now that we are an attentive company, you can also leverage a lot of their comprehensive SMS marketing solution as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for that, Yvonne. That was fantastic, as always. Um, there's a lot of love being uh, shared for Tone in the chat. Um, Melanie... Uh, Melanie Corrigan said, Tone's personalization combined with attentive equals game changing. I think that's pretty accurate, which is awesome. A uh, few questions for you. Um, one is, uh, you know, what would you say to people who say, okay, this, this looks like a great product, but how do, I, how do I scale that? Is this really scalable, you know, beyond a, you know, you know, going from less than a million in sales all the way up to greater than 10 million in sales? You know, I imagine you've encountered that that friction at some point. How, how would you address that? Now, is the question, how does tone scale or how does any sort of two-way messaging, if I'm doing it myself, scale? Uh, let's just say two-way messaging in general. So two-way messaging in general is hard to scale because it's a pretty uh, linear function of how many humans you need to maintain a certain exactly. time, right? Um, to answer the question of how tone scales it, um, we have a pool of agents that, and a gamified system that enables us to scale up and down based on demand. Um, and our AI and our templates make it really, really easy to answer rote questions and to kind of freestyle when customers go a little bit off script. Got it. That's great. And then uh, a few other questions for you here. Does, uh, does Tone replace your current customer service team or how does that work? For some brands, yes. So uh, we let brands draw the line between uh, proactive support, which is what we call what we do, or sales, and their own support team. Uh, we have some brands where they leverage us totally for support, and other brands say, you know what, I want to reduce my support ticket volume by 30%. I'm going to put the, the live text number here, here, and here. I mean, they can kind of programmatically do that by testing. Um, and... Uh, then there are um, also brands that want to reduce their average response time, for example, um, or maybe just during a holiday season, turn tone on to uh, to sort of um, ease up on some of the volume as well. Got it. And then, uh, yeah, Jake has just asked, uh, what is this gamified system you mentioned your reps using? It is a, <laughs> obviously it is a trade secret. Um, but one of the things that we learned early on uh, in doing this is, um, uh, it's important for agents that are not part of your support team to really be motivated to give the best support uh, to to brands, uh, to, to end customers. Um, so we've tried all sorts of different ways to make sure that the agents that are built into the Tone platform are aligned with every single customer, every single brand that they're serving. Got it. Makes sense. Cool. Thanks for answering that for Jake. All right. That's, uh, that's it for, for us. Uh, thanks so much to Yvonne for, for joining us yet again and looking forward to working with you and the, uh, the attentive team as well. Sure. Thank you for having me. Take care. All right. Take care. Oh, wait, before you jump off to uh, we do have uh, the special giveaway. Um, so tone is giving away uh, the phone. Soap pro um, the, the disinfectant essentially for your phone, um, which is a, which is a great prize. And so I'm, um, Gonna just randomly scroll through the people on with us today, very awkwardly. <laughs> and so our lucky winner for the Phone Soap Pro is Susie Lee of Stojo.co. So congratulations, Susie Lee. We have your contact information. We'll be in touch right afterwards to, uh, <laughs> to get your uh, your uh, shipping address. Thanks for putting that up, Tone. Congrats, Susie. That's an awesome product. It's like a tanning bed for your phone. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to keep the party going here. Uh, really excited to be welcoming Miles to the stage. Hey, Miles. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm doing well. I'll let you get your screen sharing going, and I'll, I'll give you a quick intro. So, yeah, yeah Miles is the – yeah, yeah. We're good. We can see it. So, Miles is the head of sales for America's in APAC. His fun fact uh, is he swallowed a quarter when he was young at the movies watching Flubber with Robin Williams, which is just an awesome movie. I remember seeing that in theaters myself. Um, yeah, so Miles is the head of sales uh, at Clayvu, a company that is passionate about on-site search, merchandising, and product recommendations. He has over eight years in experience of working with SMB to mid-market retailers. Um, Clayvu is a fantastic product, and I know everybody's going to be really excited to see what Miles has to say. 
thanks so much for joining us, Miles. Yeah, no, thank you, Chris. And, and thanks for gorgeous putting this, you know, organizing this event um, and inviting us to be a part of the webinar. And welcome, everyone. Um, on, you hope everyone's having a, a, um, a great day today. So, yeah. So, again, my name is Miles Tinsley, head of sales. I was the first employee uh, in North America, and I, I, I run uh, and manage all revenue for our North American and APAC market. So, super, super excited to, to be here. Um, just during my quick session today, I want to tell you a little bit about. You know who Klebu is and, and what we do, and then show you some actionable tips on how to use Klebu to balance automation and personalization uh, to help your brand boost performance, accelerate uh, growth, and increase conversion. So, um, this pandemic certainly accelerated the move to digital transformation for retail in a, in a very profound way, uh, and it's a trend that is here to stay now that things are, are getting back to normal again. Uh, this also has meant that competition in e-commerce is at its highest and, and retailers have now have more pressure to stand out from the competition by providing a, a very seamless shopping experience and one that promotes customers to, to essentially just keep coming back. Um, thanks also to, to online pioneers such as Amazon, 80% of customers have grown to expect right, and desire personalized experiences and to be easily connected uh, to relevant products at the right time. Whether they're utilizing search or browsing category pages, providing your shoppers with a customized product discovery based experience on their real time intent makes such a more powerful shopping experience um, in order to reduce bounce rates, boost conversions and enhance overall sales. So how can you strike the perfect balance between AI automation and strategic control? And what can you do to ensure you're effectively optimizing the shopping experience and guiding your shoppers through their purchase journey? With Klebu, you're able to connect people to products they want to buy. Klebu product discovery suite includes on-site smart search, smart category merchandising, smart recommendations, all underpinned by our personalization and NLP engine powered by real-time buyer intent. Um, so shopper intent begins the moment shoppers come to a website, whether they know exactly what they're looking for or just simply browsing, shoppers are in discovery mode and may use a multitude of different discovery avenues to navigate the products they're looking for. It is essentially no matter, or it is essential no matter what the journey the shopper decides to take, whether it be through search or category listings or recommendation blocks, you must ensure that the customer is being served the most relevant products and stays highly engaged. Search is paramount to product discovery. Website visitors who search are high intent buyers, know what they're looking for and what they want to find. We found that shoppers who search are three to five times more likely to convert uh, than those who do not. It's important that you have an intelligent and intuitive search experience that can quickly deliver relevant products to your customers. So what does this look like in practice based on our research? Um, according to Klebu, 17% of searches contain three or more words. So this is considered a complex search query. For 54% of the retailers researched by Klebu, they returned zero or irrelevant results for complex search queries. According to the Bayman Institute, shoppers will abandon the website if they are faced with zero results. They won't cons even consider that maybe the products are there, but just didn't surface. So again, they're just leaving the website. They're getting distracted. Uh, they're moving away. This really highlights the need for this user experience to be optimized. So here are some questions you should be asking when reviewing if your search solution is optimized. Very simple things, but you know, super, super important. Just to make sure, does my search work? Number one is misspellings. Firstly, does your search return with relevant results? If you search with any misspellings, one character or even two characters, are relevant results being rendered? Uh, go to your website and try to find that out right now. Enrichment. If you're searching for terms such as color, like the word neutral, or sofa versus couch, are the relevant products being returned? Um, complex and search queries along with stop words. Is your site geared up to handle longer queries, especially with voice search? 40% of millennials will use voice search prior to purchasing. Can your website handle these longer, more conversational search queries? One of Klebu's core components is our NLP, natural language processing. In the same way that people speak, in different ways, people search in different ways. And it's super important that you're able to understand the intent behind what customers are looking for in order to boost those conversions and, in fact, reduce those bounce rates. One example of how Klebu has helped Skinny Dip London is when customers visit the site and search for mobile, it brings back relevant results for phones, which is what the product is actually labeled within their product catalog. 
Clevu, in fact, enriches that product catalog in real time during our indexing and enables three to five times more depth and coverage of products that would have otherwise been missed. When a retailer has a technology such as Clevu or a lot of other search solutions, uh, Clevu installed that is underpinned by linguistics and machine learning, relevant results are displayed for searches including price, product attributes, sentiment, and so on. So combining the power of search relevancy enhances the personalization behind the scenes of search, category navigation, and product recommendations all working together on your website at once. Continuously learning from search queries, clicks, and purchases, Clevu gives, gives the, uh, the ability for Clevu to automatically merchandise the site on the retailer's behalf, such as best sellers, top attributes, and even preferred brands. So while machine learning is extremely powerful, nobody knows the retailer's business and their objectives better than the retailers themselves. It's important that a retailer can balance machine learning and strategic control in order to ensure the e-commerce site is aligned with the wider business goals. In the same way you would put items you want to showcase in certain positions in brick and mortar, there's no reason why you can't do the same online. So just make sure you're asking yourself a few questions to make sure your merchandising is up to scratch. Can you boost specific hero SKUs across in all different areas of product discovery? Can you boost by attributes such as brand or margins or on sale or in stock or out of stock? Can you schedule in merchandising rules to help with your campaigns that you're running with your marketing team? So here at Clevu, we offer the ability to merchandise across the full product discovery suite. That's again, that's search, that's collection page, that's recommendations. LSE, a, a great brand of ours, is using Clevu's smart, uh, smart category merchandising tool to rank and order the products on their category pages. This used to be a very manual process for them. And here we can see from LSE how AI has enabled the showcasing of trending products automatically while also giving the team the tools they need to have the flexibility to override and fit within their broader merchandising goals. So when a shopper visits a website, they usually browse through a catalog to find a relevant product of their choice. Many shoppers prefer to use search if they know exactly what they're looking for. Amazon's a great example of that. If the customer is using search and has clicked on a few products, in most cases, this is a very good indicator they may have spotted something of interest. These are the types of questions you should ask yourself to see if your website truly offers one-to-one -one personalization. So 34% of frequent shoppers are more likely to shop more if the website shows them products based on, for example, their past purchase history. Clevu offers a truly that one-to-one -one personalized shopping experience across search results, listings, category listings, or collection listings, and recommendations. 3% increase in, in uh, session value, 6% increase in AOV, 4% increase in revenue from search. Bulletproof, one of my favorite brands, clean coffee, yeah, keto-friendly snacks, um, and proven supplements made with carefully select ingredients, they offer a couple of personalization, uh, really neat features inside of their, their, their search. Uh, number one is what we call zero character search. So without typing in any sort of character, we're offering personalized recommendations based on trending products or products that they've recently clicked or product, products that they've recently purchased. So really personalizing from the, just by clicking into the search bar, because we know those individual consumers are on a mission to find what they're looking for. So all in all, Clevu's AI and NLP powered uh, discovery suite includes on-site search, smart, uh, smart merchandising and personalization, enabling e-commerce websites to deliver shopping experiences uh, powered by real-time shopper intent, truly at the intersection of automation and personalization. And finally, you know, one of the things that we're offering is a, pre, a free product discovery audit for any merchants. During this free audit session, we also offer practical advice and actionable tips on how to create a product discovery experience your shoppers will love. We'll essentially uh, score your site based on several things around uh, just relevancy, around merchandising, around AI. So love to, love to understand your brand more and how, and how Clevu can help. And um, that's it for me. Thanks so much. Awesome. That was fantastic, Miles. Uh, I was really excited to, to get this, uh, this uh, presentation about Clevu. You know, personally, as a, as a consumer, I, I really love when I'm on a website that has, you know, tons of SKUs, tons of products. And then based on some input from myself, it basically takes that full list of products and trims it down to something that is, is much more likely for me to purchase. And I'm sure everybody with us today agrees. So it was great to see that that presentation. A few questions for you. Um, you know, 
what what does Clevu Clevu look like out of the box? Like you know, I imagine brands see this as something super appealing, but they might think that it's uh, maybe a little bit complex to get set up with. Uh, what do you say about that? Yeah, so we have we have direct integrations with the the major platforms that are out there, and we we do offer an out of the box solution. Most of our solutions are all of every anytime someone installs, we want to make sure that number one, we we go through their business objectives off of the, the front end customizations. And so, Clevu has recently released an open source JavaScript library. And so we're giving this this library to the merchants, to the SIs and the agencies, to where they can literally build Clevu search from scratch. One thing that we also released is the ability to preserve your Shopify theme. So if you've already spent countless of resources and hours on, um, on, on the front end of your website uh, and you preserve your theme through Clevu, we're preserving all the elements. The only thing that Clevu is doing is at the time of indexing, we're just sending back the, the product IDs back to, back to Shopify for an example. And this allows all the elements that you've already designed to be preserved. And so literally it's a, it's an out of the box solution that we can mirror your exact same website. Or again, if you're still in this phase of using, uh, maybe you want a, a new filtering mechanism and you want to use our, our dynamic filtering, you can build Clevu search from scratch using our filtering, using our quick search navigation all the way down to using recommendations. So super easy to get up and running. Um, it's very easy to install our application. So we highly recommend it. Um, we have, you know, you can easily install an unpublished theme or a testing environment. So, you know, we, we love to, to help you in any way that we possibly can. Awesome. And Angie uh, has just posted a question here. If a customer has not previously seen your website, will it still be as personalized for that specific customer? Yeah. So we're, do, we're doing that in real time. So the first, that's a great question. So the first thing that we're doing is we're basing it off of site-wide behavior. So what are most people searching for? What are most people clicking on? What are most people purchasing? And we're going to display those recommendations. As you start to search, let's say you start to search for the color blue. We recognize attributes such as the color blue. Um, and so it's very important for us to immediately start to personalize the experience based on that navigation. So we might highlight and promote certain blue products. Or if you're very prominent, you might you might start to search by Nike or click in a Nike category. If you go if you're if you're strictly browsing uh, maybe a category for shoes, you go through search the next time. We're going to start to display those types of shoes. So it's this real time attribute level intent that allows us to immediately start to impact the personalization on a one to one level. If you haven't been to the site the first time. Awesome. And then last question, while I let you off the hook is uh, how does personalized recommendations work? You mentioned that. Yeah, very similar. So as I mentioned, all three of our solutions are kind of working together. Uh, and our core product is search. Again, we think that search data is very underused in the e-commerce space. And so if we can start by looking at the first character of what someone's searching for, that allows us to not only start promoting per and personalizing products on category pages, but also in product recommendations. And this is across the entire website, from the home page to the product page. Uh, you can have banners, uh, recommendations on collection pages, even post-purchase and cart pages, right? And so from the, from the second that you start to search or the, step, the second you start to navigate, we're taking that learning and we're applying it to personalizing the product recommendations. Awesome. Cool. Uh, and that's, that's it. Thanks so much, Miles, for joining us. I think there was another question that popped in um, that I'll yeah. let you answer. Uh, just, just get us a question. But yeah, thanks so much again, Miles, and, and for representing the, the Clevu team. Of course. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to do your special giveaway. I keep, forget keep forgetting to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, Clevu has put up a Echo Show 5, which is another fantastic prize. So again, uh, just going to go through the, uh, the list of attendees here. Pick one lucky winner. So the Echo Show 5 is going to James Stapleton of uh, TRX Training. So congrats. congrats, James. You got an Echo Show 5 coming your way. We'll be in touch with you afterwards to, to get your shipping address. All right, cool. Thanks, Miles. You got it. Cool. All righty. We're going to keep things going here. And uh, up next will be myself presenting for the gorgeous team. I'm doubling as uh, MC and presenter today. And so... Obviously, uh, I'll be MC or presenting. So if you guys do have any questions for me and the gorgeous team, just just post it in the, the questions tab and I'll, I'll be sure to get to it right afterwards. But yeah, really excited to have the opportunity to speak with everybody with us today. Um, I lead tech partnerships at Gorgeous, which uh, basically means I get to work with all the great partners with me on the panel today and, and figure out how we can 
build an integrated um, set of tools that really make things easier for the brands with us today. And so uh, Gorgeous, for those who aren't familiar, um, we are a, a customer support help desk built specifically for e-commerce. We were built for Shopify. We now also integrate with the likes of, of Big Commerce and Magento. And we're, we're currently working with over 6,000 D2C brands in the e-commerce space, uh, all different shapes and sizes, as you can see here. Um, and today, really, I'm going to be talking about um, you know, how we're really thinking about you know, striking that perfect balance of automa uh, automation and personalization. We talk about it all the time. Automation is key, obviously, for scaling and being efficient and maximizing revenue opportunity. But also, you can't you know, focus too much on the automation where you're starting to sacrifice on the personalization side. Uh, you know, funny enough, I've learned a lot from uh, Ren from the Hello Tushy who uh, was with us today, or maybe she's still with us today. And you know, we're, we're talking about all these cool automation tools we have. And then she's like, okay, that's great. But we also really pride ourselves in a personalized experience. And so um, that very much is baked into our, our product roadmap um, decisions to make sure that we can make it easy to you know, be fast, but also to be efficient and, and personalized as well. And so on this slide, I'm really showing, I see Ren still with us, uh, awesome. Um, so on this slide, I'm showing you how we're, we're basically gamifying our, our, uh, the support quality that our 6,000 plus brands are delivering each day. And so we track a, a number of different support metrics inside of Gorgeous um, to assess um, the performance of the brands who are using Gorgeous. And so we have first response time. So this is you know, how quickly are you able to actually respond to a customer inquiry, you might not necessarily have solved that problem, but you've at least addressed it and said, hey, like, we hear you, we're gonna be getting to that uh, ASAP. And then we also track uh, resolution time. So how long does it actually take you to solve a specific inquiry that your customers are having? We have tremendous data that shows there's a strong correlation between you know, the lower your response time, um, the higher the conversion rate, the less churn you have, the, the, the higher the LTV, et cetera. And so we've gamified this by basically categorizing and lumping our 6,000 plus customers into five different uh, support levels. Um, so five being, you know, the absolute best, less than 10 minutes, you know, think of Amazon. One thing that they absolutely crush is, you know, having stellar response times. And so that's really the gold standard. And so currently only 3% of our brands uh, are in this level five, meaning they have less than 10 minute response time. Um, and so we're really focusing as much as we can on building out our product features to make it really easy to get uh, brands, you know, from the level two to three all the way up to a, to a four and five. And so I'll be talking today about some of the, the, the key features that we're, you know, developing or already have developed that really make it easy to, uh, to really lower those response times. So before we dive into uh, our product features, I really want to highlight, you know, wh where do traditional help desks fall short? So any brands with us today who might be using a help desk or, or, or they're not, um, you know, understanding, you know, what a good help desk looks like versus one that maybe isn't so great. And so the three key things here are lack of automations. And so obviously doing things in a manual, ma manual sense is, is not scalable. It's going to lead to increased costs. It's going to lead to an increase in, in mistakes and errors. Um, customers are not going to be happy about that. A key thing is, is having, you know, that data. Um, so that in customer intelligence, so that's key as well. So you need to be able to, you know, you can't have your support team not have all the relevant customer information when they're dealing with them. And so for instance, we have tight integrations with Shopify and other e-com platforms, meaning any support agents who are dealing with a the customer, they have all of that relevant information they need um, to give a, a seamless experience. So there's no more switching tabs, going into Shopify, pulling order information. We're gonna have all of that living right inside of Gorgeous. Um, so you can, you can leverage that. And we also have a bunch of auto automation tools as well um, that will be able to pull in that, that type of information. And then finally, channel aggregation, right? So we hear omni-channel, that's a big buzzword in the e-com industry right now. And so your customers are shopping on, on, on multiple channels. And so it's important from a customer support standpoint that you are connecting with your customers on each of these channels in, a, in an integrated way, right? So the experience that you're giving a customer on say email um, needs to be consistent with the experience that they're getting via live chat, via SMS, you know, with tone and attentive for instance. Um, or social media, they're commenting on one of your posts or the Instagram DMing you. You need to be giving them that same seamless experience, um, both in the messaging that you're delivering, but also in the timing, um, basically the speed in which you're able to answer those questions. And so it's really key um, that you have channel aggregation. And unfortunately, a lot of help desks um, and, and, and CS strategies um, lack that. And so that's something that Gorgeous definitely prides itself on.
All right, so that begs the question, what is Gorgeous doing to help deliver a balanced CX strategy where we're striking that perfect balance of automation and, and personalization for our brands? And so, you know, one of the most important things we do is we analyze continuously um, the nature uh, of the tickets, which is essentially a customer conversation that our brands are having. And so we did a huge analysis of over you know, 10,000 different tickets to categorize them and put them into buckets based on the question type. And you can see the breakdown of results here. And so one third of all tickets analyzed were directly related to order status. This is probably not a surprise for brands with us today. I'm sure you guys get a ton of questions related to order status. And so this is an example where you don't really need to, you know, have so much of a personalized response to this. So, you know, if you, if you ever shop with uh, Hello Tushy, they give really personalized responses. But for something like order status, this is a good example of where you just need to be automated. You need to speed this up. It's taking up one third of your entire support volume. Have a nice, you know, default personalized message. But really, at the end of the day, you want to answer those questions as fast as possible. And so I'll show you in a second how we're able to do that at scale. Um, but, you know, basically wiping out this entire 33%. So that's a good example of something that needs, just needs to be automated as quick as possible. There are a few other categories here that will look like in much smaller percentages are actually quite critical. So for instance, product availability, product feedback, product, you know, suggestion, product question, you know, these are pre-sale questions, right? And this is a huge thing we talk about at Gorgeous. You know, people think of support as only post-purchase, but because we're a channel in which you're interacting with your customers directly, it also extends very much so to pre-sale. And these questions in categories that I'm showing here are directly related to pre-sale questions. And so if you're not answering these in a timely fashion and in a personalized fashion, then those are huge missed opportunities. And so, you know, for some brands are doing 10 to 100,000 tickets a month. And so, you know, even three to 4% is actually quite a significant number. And so we, we really put a premium on making sure that you can answer all of these questions, both in a personalized and automated fashion. And so uh, a, a quick table stakes feature of how we're able to do this, you know, answer something like Wismo, where is my order at scale? So we have a, a nice macros feature. So because of our integrations with Shopify, you can pull all of these, these variables, these data points, you know, the customer's order numbers, tracking numbers, shipping address, et cetera. Um, so you can have macros built out. So any time a customer asks a specific question, you can just either manually enter that macro, which will basically just fill out a, a pre-canned response, or you can set up our rules, which basically says, anytime a customer asks, where is my order or some facsimile thereof, then we'll automatically go ahead and fire that macro. So that's an easy way to automate, you know, up to 30 to 40% of your entire support volume if you're able to, uh, to set those up properly. Another big feature of Gorgeous is our machine learning. So essentially we're detecting the intent uh, and the messaging of all of the, the messages that your customers are, are pouring in. And so, what we'll do is we'll, we'll analyze the text of the, the, the tickets uh, of the messages that your customers are sending in. We'll apply a tag to those tickets. Um, so tags are a really powerful feature. It's essentially like a subject line um, for a specific ticket. And so imagine, you know, there's a shipping related tag, there's a, a product question, a broken product, VIP customer. Um, what this will do is it'll tag the, the ticket as such and it will it'll place it in the appropriate bin or view inside of Gorgeous. And this is important, certainly for as you start to scale, you might have certain support agents designated for handling certain types of tickets. So say I'm a senior support agent, I'm the one who's responsible for handling, you know, VIP customers, for instance. So when I clock in, so to speak, and I go into my bin, I have high confidence that when I open up any ticket, it's it's been appropriately triaged. And so if you didn't have this tagging system, this machine learning detecting the intent, you would basically have to sift through an ocean of tickets and say, yep, that one's for me. Yep, no, that one's that that one's not for me. And so the 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 machine learning detecting the intent is really powerful as well. And I'll talk in a second about how this extends to our social media integrations. And yeah, so that leads nicely into the omni-channel approach. So automation personalization. This is obviously super relevant for um, you know omni-channel approach. Social media specifically. Um, shoppers, as I mentioned earlier, are, are everywhere now, and it's important for brands to be there as well, certainly as it pertains to uh, customer experience. So on the social media front, um, Gorgeous integrates nicely with Facebook, Instagram, um, including Facebook Messenger and Instagram DMs. And so if a customer is, is you know, interacting with your brand via Instagram or Facebook DM, those conversations will be replicated inside of Gorgeous. And if they have already you know, shopped with you before and we have Shopify information with them, 
you're able to leverage all of that data to give them an even more personalized experience, um, which is huge. And so we just launched Instagram DMs actually um, last month. And so this is a this is one of the most heavily requested product features on the gorgeous side. Another huge thing that we just released as it relates to automation is self-service. So those who have been with Gorgeous know that uh, we have a, a live chat a widget that can show up on your website, um, which is great for speaking with a live agent, but obviously it's great if you can deflect as much of your customer support volume as possible. And so we've accomplished this by releasing our self-service, which we just launched a few months ago. And this is able to automate up to 40% of your, your chat tickets. Right now it's, it's probably around the 25 to 30%, but we're really close to getting that number up to, towards that 40%. You can see what this looks like. And so basically, imagine you're a customer, you go on a website, instead of having to actually email or live chat into a support agent, you can just hit this um, self-serve portal widget. You can enter your email and order ID, and then you can do things like track an order, return an order, cancel an order, or report an issue. And then if you need to, you can easily escalate the conversation to a live agent, right? So this is a huge way to automate um, your support and deflect as much of that volume as possible. And on the analytics side, so I'm talking about how we're making it easy to achieve automation and personalization. It's also really important to track the performance of these things. And so we have a really powerful analytics dashboard inside of our platform, which makes it easy to um, just see how much revenue you're actually generating from Gorgeous. So any sales that are attributed to Gorgeous are, are tracked inside of our platform. Here's an example of one of our brands from almost two years ago, where in a single day, they generated uh, close to $23,000 in sales just using our live chat. Right, and so how they did this, we have tremendous data that shows um, by replying to a customer inquiry that came in via SMS or live chat in under 10 minutes, which is that sweet spot, that 10 minute mark, their conversion rates go from say two to 7%, which is industry standard, all the way up to 28%. And so this is a, a nice example of a brand that really took advantage of that and gave that exceptional fast um, response times to really drive sales um, just through the live chat uh, channel. And another big piece uh, of how we're really, you know, leveling up on the personalization and automation front is through our integrations, right? I say this all the time. Gorgeous natively is, is a fantastic tool. We're really proud of it. But when you start factoring in all the different integrations that plug into our platform, it really takes it um, to the next level. And so we have over 50 plus integrations right now. Um, we integrate with Tone, um, you know, for, for seamless two-way support via SMS, which is fantastic. Um, we've just launched a new integration with Ada, um, which I'm really, really excited about. And I know Ben's going to talk about that more, so uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it here. But yeah, it's our first AI chatbot integration. It's going to just take automation to the next level for our customers, which is huge. And then obviously Alloy, um, you know, fantastic platform for really taking your automation to the next level. And so we're really happy that um, they, uh, they built an integration workflow for Gorgeous as well. And then a few other integrations that I want to highlight as well, just because I know they're really popular in this space. Um, and these are integrations that we just recently shipped. I think they do a really good job in highlighting, you know, that per that level of extra data that you have on your customers that you can leverage for personalization. So one is Klaviyo. Everybody knows about Klaviyo. We just built this uh, really powerful integration with them that um, inside of our platform, so this is what a, a ticket would look like with a customer, you're able to pull in all of this customer information on, uh, on the customer sidebar. So you can see all the different types of segments they're in. You can see all their, the different, uh, you know, all the customer information. You can see any uh, coupons or discount codes that have been applied to them. So this is really easy to, to have additional information that you can leverage in a personalized fashion. Likewise for Yotpo, so re reviews and rewards and loyalty platform, we have a new integration with them as well. And so now any customer um, that is shopping with you, you can see all their loyalty points. You can see all the different reviews they've left with you. You can see the typical um, product types that they're, they've been commenting on or reviewing. And so this makes it really easy to leverage. So you could say, hey, you know, I see you're a big fan of ours. You've you know, been leaving some great reviews. That's something really easy to, to leverage as well. And that's it for me. Um, you know, if you are interested in checking out Gorgeous, just contact me at uh, chris at gorgeous.com. We have a special offer going on right now until the, uh, until the end of July where you can get two free months of Gorgeous to try us out, which hopefully is all you'll need to, uh, to see the, uh, the return on investment for that. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. I see a few did roll in here. Um, but uh, for now, I'm just going to announce the lucky winner of our set of AirPod Pros. I got my favorite GIF here to help me out. And so I'm just going to scroll really quickly through the attendees here and I'll give uh, some lucky winner a set of AirPod Pros. Here we go. 
All right, we have Steffi Stewart. Uh, so Steffi Stewart, congratulations. You are the winner of our AirPod Pros giveaway. I have your contact information and I'll be in touch with you right after this to, uh, to get them sent out to you. All right, I've done a lot of talking today. I'm happy to take a break here. And with that, I'm really happy to welcome Ben to the stage. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me. Awesome, cool. I'll let you get teed up with your screen share there and I'll uh, give you a quick intro. Awesome. Cool, yeah, Ben, friend of mine, uh, he's here in Toronto. He's the Director of Partnerships with uh, one of Canada's latest unicorns, Ada. Um, his fun fact is that he played a game of Jenga with Justin Bieber. He told us the backdrop of this uh, before we went on air and maybe I'll spare that for now. Um, but it's a pretty cool story. But yeah, Ben, he loves growing businesses by developing strong relationships. He's passionate about finding new markets for products by creating best-in-class technology alliances. Um, you know, Ben leads the partnership team at Ada, which I know everybody's going to be super excited to see, and including our new integration. So yeah, thanks for joining us, Ben. The floor is all yours. Thanks for having me, Chris. Um, yeah, really excited to be here. Really excited to be talking to brands that are already using Gorgeous and that are, in general, interested in automation. But the topic of this conversation is so important, right? Because automation is not valuable if you're not doing it in a personalized manner that drives better engagement, better customer satisfaction, and ideally more revenue for your brand. Um, so, you know, Ada is an automation and integration platform, um, and we're working with some of the world's fastest growing e commerce companies to really help them scale. Um, and what we love about our platform is our ability to work with all different types of businesses. Um, so in the e-commerce space, we're working with those quickly growing D2C brands, those amazing subscription services, as well as the platforms that are helping people do commerce, like Shopify and Facebook. Um, and We've built a really strong customer advisory board here at Ada, which helps us focus not only on e-commerce, which is one of our core verticals, uh, but also the other verticals we service. We service B2B and B2C SaaS, e-commerce, uh, e financial technology, telco, airlines, et cetera. And what's so interesting about working with, this, with these CS leaders is that we're able to understand the trends across all of the different verticals to understand what are the biggest pain points these businesses are trying to solve, and how can we turn all of these businesses, not only into innovative support companies, but also into fantastic e-commerce companies, right? So often we think about e-com just in the mindset of a DSC brand, but we're also working with our telcos to, to drive more e-commerce, with our airlines to drive more e-commerce, as well as the more traditional e-commerce stores that you think about. The overarching mindset that we are always trying to work on with any brand that we partner with is that brands should be seeking more customer conversations as they scale. And that seems to be a pretty simple concept, but in actuality, if you guys all stop and think about this for a minute, that's probably not how you're operating, right? There's this massive disconnect between the view of a conversation and an interaction with your customers as being a cost center, as opposed to looking at it as an opportunity to be a revenue center. And what we see is that when you have a human first strategy, you know, as Tivan spoke about earlier, when you're speaking to customers on a one-to-one -one basis over and over again, it becomes very hard to keep the quality of that customer interaction in line with the quantity of the interaction. So what we see is as brands scale, as you sell more products, as you have more orders, you're gonna have fewer touch points with your customers and those touch points will become less personalized because your staff become overwhelmed, they don't have as much information about them. What we're trying to do is flip that concept on its head and tell every brand that they should be seeking customer interactions. You want to have that touch point with your customer. You want to proactively reach out to them across the channels that they want. You want to proactively engage with them when they visit your website and use all of the data that you have in your disposal across your different systems to personalize that conversation and convert them into a happy 
paying customer and a happy returning customer. And the traditional viewpoint of automation and chatbots was that you these companies are putting a receptionist in front of their business, and that receptionist is nasty, right? The receptionist is stopping your customers from talking to humans because the company is trying to save money and reduce the cost of each of those interactions. If you're able to deliver good personalized automation, like you're able to build with Ada or the other providers that are speaking to you today, that becomes a different paradigm. And the receptionist instead becomes a, the friendliest face of your business, an extension of your brand that is able to help your customers get all the information they need when they want it and transition them to a live support agent or a live sales agent when the time is right. And that's really powerful. So when we look not only at e-commerce, but across our entire customer base across verticals, what you see is that you're able to use automation and personalize that automation to help with marketing, to help with sales, and to help with support. And what's so interesting about that is our customers start to learn from how other verticals do customer acquisition. How does Zoom Info qualify leads with Ada, and what can an e-commerce company learn from that? How does Shapermint, who's in D2C, see a 50% increase in sales productivity? Um, how does someone like Telus, one of Canada's largest e-commerce companies, start to automate over half a million dollars in revenue just through data top-ups through the bot? And that's the power of personalized automation. So what do you need to have, what, what, pla what type of platform do you need to be using for this to work? If you really go down to the bare bones of this, first of all, you need your platform to integrate with everything. As beautiful as it would be if all of the people on this call have all of their customer data in Gorgeous, most of our e-commerce companies are run on these Frankenstacks, as we call it, right? A lot of different systems for OMS, for CRM, for marketing outreach, et cetera. What you really need to power strong personalized automation is a tool that will integrate with any API-based tool that you're using to ingest information in and collect information that you go and populate out so you know more about your customers. The second piece that's important is you want it to be completely cohesive. And this is because you want to put the power in the hands of your business stakeholders to build out the automation that's going to interact with your customers. Who knows how to speak to your customers best? It's your salespeople and it's your customer support staff because they're the ones who are constantly talking to them. Do you really want to put that conversation in the hands of a developer that isn't customer facing? The goal here is that you can put the power in the hands of the same agents, generally the highest performing agents that are living in your CX platform like Gorgeous. And those are the agents that are able to build out the automated flows. So they're able to adapt quickly, learn, and deliver amazing customer experience. And finally, once you marry those two pieces, integrations and codeless use, you're able to make a hyper-personalized product because you're able to pull information from disparate systems like, like Chris just talked about and use them in a very simple interface to create super-personalized interactions with your customers. And that's where the power of automation really lives. When you have that in place, what you're doing is you are creating a concierge that sits with your shoppers across their entire customer journey, right? And that's what you want to facilitate. You don't want to only be driving automation in a post-sale support environment. You want it to be there across the entire buyer journey. So you want it to engage with your customers. You want it to help them discover the products that you're selling on your site as if they were that in-store employee. You want it to help them explore what the, what the different products are, you want it to make it easier for them to buy. You want it to make it easier for them to onboard and use once they've received it. And of course, easier to ask questions if something is wrong. So I'm gonna walk you through a visual here instead of showing slides. Here's our Ada swag shop. Uh, we do have great swag. Happy to send you some if you sign up for a demo. And what you're seeing here is a proactive engagement to try and sign someone up who's browsing on your website and get them activated on your mailing list, right? We've seen all kinds of unique, unique ways of doing this with spinning wheels, et cetera, but the best way to interact with your customers is to have a conversation with them. And when a customer is coming in and putting in this information, it gets sent into your own CRM system, it can get populated into fields in Shopify, 
and you're shooting them back a discount code directly through the chat. The customer then has that code. It can populate directly in your, in your checkout on Shopify, Magento, BigCommerce, et cetera, um, and they're off to the races. Let's say someone's coming through and they're interacting, looking at sizing. You can proactively reach out to that customer and give them some feedback. If sizing is a big issue for your company, you can have a human agent reach out at that point and make sure that they're helping with this engagement. If someone is indecisive on your site, choosing between two different products, two different colors, why not offer them discounts so that they buy both, right? And this is that, that type of engagement where you're turning automation into a highly personalized shopping concierge as opposed to uh, a static bot that's only able to click buttons, et cetera. Now, let's talk through what this looks like from a perspective of connecting into a CRM like Gorgeous. So of course, you have your agents. Your agents are living within their backend agent support suite. Um, but a customer comes to your front page of your website. And as Chris talked about, the main inquiries are pretty prescriptive. You know that track my order is going to be between 30 to 50% of your inquiries. Put it right there. But that doesn't mean that you need to click that button. You can ask that question in however you would want to type it. And Ada's ML is able to understand it and take you through a flow. And what we can do here, which is quite unique, is we can ask a customer, do you have your order number or not? If they don't have their order number, they can, you can take them through an authentication flow and pull all the information from the back end. In this case, the customer does. We're querying a back end system. And now we have this dynamic change in tone. We're speaking to the customer as Sarah. We're pulling what their order was with the picture directly into the chat. And we're telling them what it's going to be delivered. And what's so cool about this is, this information could be held in three different systems, right? But Ada is, is seamlessly bringing it together because of that integration tool. Now, let's say someone has a problem with their order. Each brand has a different workflow in how they need to solve those problems. They might have to work out of a spreadsheet. They may be able to action on the API. So in this situation, a customer is being sent the wrong item. And once they go through that flow, we're going to use conditional logic set up in consultation with the business to say, for this type of use case, we want to create a ticket in Gorgeous. And Ada is going to directly create the ticket in Gorgeous so an agent can open it. When the agent opens it, they get the full transcript. They have a summary of that transcript that's brought forward with our ML. And they get all of the information about the customer, as well as some of those amazing tags that Chris was talking about earlier in their new update. And what's really powerful here is, you can add in as many preliminary questions as you want for the bot to ask so that you're reducing how many touch points it takes for the chatter to come, for the agent to respond. Now, let's look at that same scenario, but let's say that this time Sarah's order was actually damaged. And your brand knows that damaged orders deliver poor CSAP and then they go post on social media and it's not good for your brand. In this situation, we're going to hand it off directly to a live chat agent. So Ada's window drops. Gorgeous's window opens up, and we're proactively on behalf of the customer reaching out to Gorgeous. Now the apologies for that. It looks like uh, looks like Ben was uh, dropped off there. Give him a quick minute here to see if he can get back on. Just bear with us here. There he is. Sorry about that, Ben. You with us? All right. Can you hear me, Chris? Yeah. All we right. lost there for a minute. Yeah. Sorry, I got kicked out. Um, I'm good. Keep no worries. So what what you're seeing in this situation is that the agent is able to now interact in a live chat conversation. And what's so powerful about this is that not only are you able to give a user different shopping experiences and different support experiences based off of the type of intent they have, but you can also stitch together different systems, right? So of course the ideal state is for all of your agents to be living in a single CX platform like Gorgeous. But for a lot of customers we work with, 
their sales agents may be in a different platform than their support agents. They may be hosting information in different order management systems, in different CRMs, pulling data from Shopify, Magento, et cetera. And what's cool about this is you're able to stitch together the information for all those disparate systems. So what does that actually mean for a brand? Uh, Shaperment was someone we talked about earlier, and they're a really interesting case study in how they were able to leverage the reduction of Wismo inquiries into more sales. And so they actually came to us because they had scaled their business from zero to four million users in just under two years, right? The dream of every D2C brand. And they're very savvy digital marketers, and they have a really clear understanding of the inputs and the outputs. So for however much they spend, they understand how many orders they're gonna receive. And they also understood for every order they receive, what is the percentage of contact that a customer will give them? That stat that Chris talked about earlier, where 30% of your orders are gonna result in a where's my order inquiry is pretty standard across the board. So as they went to, to scale into massive growth and were thinking about the holiday season, Black Friday, all of the ad spend that they were gonna go into digital on demand, they came to Ada to try and figure out how can a bot actually deliver the complex shopping experience and automated support experience that they need. And what we were able to do very quickly was reduce their Wismo inquiries by 75%, right? So 75% of all of their order tracking inquiries were handled directly through the bot in a self-serve manner. And what that did was it freed up their agents to spend more time actually doing chat assisted sales. So they saw a 15% increase in the daily engagement rate or contact rate that their agents had in speaking with their customers. And what's so interesting about that is they actually opted to start hiring more agents. So as we talked about earlier in that question with Chivon, is automation a replacement of your support team? What we often find is that automation actually helps you scale your pet count because your headcount is now being able to be tied directly to revenue as opposed to thinking about it as a cost center. I wanna talk about one more here in Indigo, who is a great Canadian retailer, um, bookseller, um, wellness retailer, et cetera. And with them, they were actually able to see a 14% reduction in the, in the amount of customer orders that result in support inquiries. Right? And that has enormous impact on your business from a perception of scale, especially as they moved from an in-store shopping experience to primarily online during COVID, which was totally new to them. Within six months, they realized over $150,000 in support savings just from tracking order tracking, just from automating order tracking inquiries. And they helped 30,000 customers self-service in the first six months. And what's so interesting about this, what I love about Indigo, is the fact that they're all about providing their customers with joyful experiences. And I think that the beginning of this conversation was all about how do you make automation personalized so that it's not robotic and it's not a poor experience. And when brands who are so customer obsessed like Indigo are talking about automation as being a joyful experience, I think all of us who are on the panel today have done their job correctly. So I leave you with just this one thought. Um, it's Ada's mantra. It's how we think and how we consult with all of the businesses we work with. We, we want to help empower you as a brand to automate first and use your humans wisely. And if you're able to do that and empower not only your customers to accomplish what they need, but also your agents to be their best selves, that is where you're gonna be able to build the most powerful brand value and the strongest relationship with your customers. So please check us out, ada.cx, or shoot me a line directly. would love to speak with you about your pers perspective on how the retail industry is changing, Ben at ada.support. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. That was fantastic, Ben. First time we've had you on a webinar. You definitely delivered. It was a, it was a pleasure to learn even more about ADA. Um, has me even more excited about our new integration with each other. Uh, a few questions before we let you off here. Um, so there was a comment actually by uh, Jessica. She says that they do have a chat bot, but it's not their main channel and they do not know how to increase interactions in the chat bot or make it a channel that helps them close sales. I know you've obviously talked a lot 
uh, through your presentation about how you can address that. But do you want to answer this one specifically? Yeah, so I mean, going back to the analogy I used earlier around the receptionist, right? And think about your business as a building and the placement of your automation and chatbot as the placement of that receptionist. If you put the receptionist on the, at, at, outside the elevator of the second floor, but they can enter the first floor via email and they can enter the second floor because you've posted the, your phone number and you have all of your social media tags at the bottom, then there's not going to be that much work for that receptionist to do because people are going to choose their own path. The best in class advice that we give to all of our brands is to curate the experience so that that receptionist, the automation is the first line of defense and is there to greet your customers. And what that allows you to do is what I showed in the first video around proactive engagement, more personalization, but it allows you to curate this experience to actually hand customers off to the right department at the right time on the right channel. We're all about delivering choice and we can do things like offer channel switching at handoff and say, do you want to work through Facebook Messenger, et cetera. But the best way to drive adoption and to streamline your processes are to start every interaction within the bot, but make sure that that bot is actually helpful and make sure that if a customer does want to speak to an agent, that what that bot is doing is it's curating that conversation so it passes over to an agent. So my main, my main point of advice here is limit the access points. Be the Apple store in terms of options. Don't be Best Buy because what you want to do is offer that premium experience where you're speaking to every customer with the same brand. And we'd be more than happy to do an audit of the work that you've done to date and help you even if you stay with your current provider. Awesome, yeah, I appreciate that one. Uh, and then the, the last question is, and I'm sure you get it a lot is, and we get it a lot as well is, is uh, you know, brands with us today, you know, at what point in their growth um, ideally are they or typically are they feeling the the pain where they think you know we definitely need to level up our automation and a tool like Ada is a great fit is there some general rule of thumb in terms of a, a brand's scale and their journey that they start to, to come towards Ada yeah so I imagine it's different for different verticals it depends on the vertical as a general room of rule of thumb we we see once you start to pass that threshold of having at least five support agents or having you know, 5,000, 10,000 monthly inquiries over chat, over email, phone calls, et cetera. That's where your, your customer support team starts to break down, especially if it needs to fluctuate with seasonal trends. Um, mm -hmm. What we found as we started in this market was we were so focused on support, so it had, to, had a lot to do with how much traffic you were already getting. But now as we've moved more into sales and marketing, and as some of the other speakers have talked about, as, we've, as automation has become better at proactive outreach, the time to start with automation is actually very early because it helps you understand and set the basis of what your support organization and, sale, and inside sales organization should look like, right? If you're able to automate from the get-go the majority of those inquiries, that's when you're able to see the real value. Um, using a platform like Gorgeous, Chris spoke about you know, getting 30, 40% of, of, of support um, automation, which is an enormous number, and it's such a fantastic product. Using a point solution like Ada takes you to the next level where we will build and deploy your bot and get it live. Our guarantee is it will be live in 30 days, integrated with your systems, and that we guarantee you will you will reduce your support inquiries by 30%. The majority of our customers are automating between 70 and 80% of their total support inquiries, allowing them to spend more time optimizing for sales and growing their business. Awesome. All right, thanks so much for that, Ben. And we'll, uh, we'll wrap up by uh, picking a, a lucky winner for your uh, Sonos One speaker that Ada has this put up for grabs. So quickly scanning through the list here. Here we go. We have uh, Ash um, from KOS.com. Ash, you're the lucky winner of the Sonos One speaker. So thanks again, Ada, for putting that up. And thanks again, Ben, for joining us for this webinar. It was awesome thanks to everybody. have you. Awesome. Take care. All right, we're going to finish up here strong. I'm happy to welcome Sarah to the stage. How are you doing, Sarah? 
I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. I'll let you get your screen share going and I'll give you a quick intro. Cool. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Really happy to have Sarah yet again, join us. She's the co-founder and CEO of Alloy. Uh, her fun fact is that she's climbed some, uh, some construction cranes before and runs a streetwear brand on the side. Those, those are definitely really cool facts, very different from one another. Um, so yeah, the founder of Alloy Automation, which is a Y Combinator uh, graduate um, from 2020. She's an Alloy is an e-commerce automation platform that helps brands eliminate manual work across fulfillment, marketing, and more. And before that, she was an engineer at Snap and had dropped out of uh, her undergrad at Harvard. She's got a lot to say, and I'm really excited to hear from you yet again. The floor is all yeah. yours, Sarah. Thanks for having me this third time. So this time I'm excited to chat about automating personalization. I think before we've talked a lot more about automating support ops, um, but I think the personalization side is interesting because there's a lot you can do with automation actually to leverage the data that you're collecting across all of your different channels. Um, so I'm gonna dive into that. Um, but first I will kind of give you an overview of Alloy and our history. So we're a relatively young company started in October of 2019. Um, a longtime friend of mine um, and I, we started working on this because we were big fans of Zapier, um, this automation tool, and we felt like there was room for a more visual and configurable automation tool for consumers who aren't that technical. And so we started building that, um, ended up doing Y Combinator, the accelerator, and then um, actually we focused in on e-commerce because we're personally very interested in all the possibilities of store automation. And that's an area that Zapier doesn't focus in on. And a lot of automation tools don't really have the integrations that matter to stores. And so we felt like there's a lot of room for this. Um, so we started working on that um, in like April of last year. That was when we launched our Shopify app. And then um, obviously the pandemic was pretty good for all of us software vendors. So um, we ended up raising a round from Bain Capital and a bunch of our app partners, for example, like Attentive, um, Attentive's founder, um, and also from Tivon from Tone, who was just previously on this call. So um, we have since moved um, to serve all Shopify brands, so not just Plus, anyone on Shopify can use us. And we also have integrated with Magento, um, Big Commerce, and then a bunch of headless platforms. And so um, people often ask us like, what is automation? How does it work? Um, so basically the concept of automation is just setting up a trigger um, in any of the apps that you use for your store. So for example, we can set up a trigger from Shopify or from Gorgeous. And so in this example, we're setting up a trigger um, that'll trigger the workflow when an order status is updated to paid in Shopify. After you have a trigger that gets um, fired, you can add in some logic blocks. So the logic blocks in a um, workflow can essentially filter out different paths of action. So let's say um, you wanna check if the total value of the order is greater than 100. So the value of that order that just came in from the trigger. You can set up an if else branch, so you can set up branches of action. And then on those branches, you can add these action blocks. And so um, we can say, send a text message with attentive with a discount code. So you define all of this so that every time this trigger event occurs, like the rest of the workflow will run. And that's useful because then you can automate all the stuff that you were previously doing um, yourself manually. So we're replicating some of these human flows. And like I mentioned, we're integrated with um, over 90 apps and platforms. So we're platform agnostic, automated workflows actually don't need to go through the underlying e-commerce platform you use. So this is perfect um, for personalization because that means we can sync say like Klaviyo tags directly into your PostScript app. And so we don't have to go through like a Shopify to pull data. So our apps span everything from SMS and email to subscriptions apps, 3PL apps, um, obviously support is a big category. And then even like your spreadsheet and project management tools. And so when it comes to personalization, that's really interesting because that means we can help you leverage your data from all these different platforms and help you perform work um, that then personalizes users' experience with your brand. So the first example would be using the data from your loyalty platforms to improve the customer support experience because I'm sure you have reps just answering tickets, but it would make the customer's experience way more personalized if the rep was actually answering the ticket with all this context on their loyalty level, on the number of reviews they've given in the past, or even their points. So that you know when you respond or you know, you can even like prioritize tickets automatically based on all this data. And so we let you do that um, with a workflow that can involve apps like Yotpo and Stamped, 
and then obviously gorgeous. Another example would be using post-purchase forms to collect data for marketing tools. And so um, we can use tools like Inquire and Typeform as triggers so that when a customer submits a form with their preferences, for example, if you run like a D2C grocery store and you, um, after a customer purchases, you wanna get their dietary restrictions. And so we can use those as triggers and then basically feed that data into other apps like Postscript Attentive um, or even like Gorgeous and tag customers appropriately so that you can send them the right marketing messaging, notify them of relevant like new product releases, all of the following. And so actually I can dive into a demo of this so that we can see how Alloy works. Um, so here's our dashboard. You can start a workflow from scratch or from a pre-built recipe. So we actually re released this marketplace of recipes recently. And um, we have around a hundred of these and these are um, basically to help you get set up with automation within minutes. So these are some pre-built recipes. Um, but in this example I just talked about, we want to trigger the workflow when a form is submitted and then get that data to then tag customers in your marketing tools. And so we can say, connect our type form, drag this onto our workflow builder. I already have my type form connected, but you can connect your own. And then you can select, let's say a form, and then you can feed it directly into Gorgeous as a tag. Um, or you can even set up, I'll add in some logic actually after I set this up. So let's say I wanna update a customer with their dietary preferences. So you can, so you can actually add this as like with data from the type form. So as you can see, it's really easy to then just like add this in. And then what's interesting about Alloy is you can then add in like logic that will personalize how you're actually like transferring data between your different apps. So we can add a branch. So we can say only if the customer answered like vegetarian, do we update them with a certain tag in this other app. And so you can set up that logic to do this like check. And so it's all totally configurable. But going back to the examples, um, Another example of personalizing would be um, using subscription renew renewal data to personalize rewards. So we connect with a variety of subscriptions apps like Recharge, Smarter, um, and then we can help you get the data on how many renewals a customer has had or what types of products they've um, subscribed to most often and then let you say customize rewards, points, or even add-ons to their next renewal of a product. So that is pretty interesting. And like I mentioned, we do have this library of pre-built workflows that we call recipes, and these will help you get started in the right direction. And so, um, as you can see, like we have a variety of different like, categories of automations. Um, not all of these are personalization related, but as you know, if you work in ops or um, logistics, you can also use automation um, to power your work. Cool. So. Um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we can help you help recommend workflows to you if you talk to our sales team or take a look at our marketplace, which is at runalloy.com slash marketplace. Um, and you might get some ideas there on how you can better improve personalization in your store. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for that, uh, Sarah. Always a pleasure learning from you. Uh, a few questions for you. So I'm sure you get this. You know, How complex is it and what's the timeline look like for a brand? getting set up with Alloy, obviously it's dependent on the amount of workflows that they want to incorporate, but you know, what, what's a standard timeline look like for a brand starting to fully leverage Alloy? Yeah, so it's exciting because I think last time we were on the webinar, we hadn't released our marketplace yet. So now you can actually take a look. Um, we have like mm -hmm. around a hundred of those um, spanning like marketing workflows ops. Um, and actually a lot of these are inspired by brands we work with. So brands on Shopify Plus and who are like basically doing best practices in like their verticals, so, like beauty brands with great loyalty programs or like um, brands like Italic with great ops um, and backends. So we've sourced those and they're all in our marketplace now. So I'll link that. And soon we're gonna be opening up, um, like basically you can start sharing your own recipes to the marketplace. Um, and none of these take more than five minutes actually. Wow, that's awesome. And then, uh, as you said, it's a lot of it's driven by customer demand. So imagine a brand comes to you and they're they're looking for a specific workflow to be built out. Obviously, it depends on you know the volume of demand, but say it's justified. How long do you think it would take for for the alloy team to to get one built up um, if yeah. it was justified? Yeah, our most complex workflow it's probably like 
like all those blocks that you saw on the screen, like they're probably like 50 or 60. Um, with those really complex ones, it might take some time to scope out, but the actual implementation we can do live with you. And that's actually pretty fun because our CSM will like build it, um, build one like branch of it. And then that might take like in total a day or two like of full work. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, and then the last question is, uh, what type of stores or what roles would typically use Alloy? Yeah, so if you're a marketer, um, you can use that for personalization, um, almost as like a pseudo customer data platform actually, because we can help you get data to wherever you're like tracking it in a spreadsheet. Um, if you're an operator like or logistics or um, fulfillments manager, you can use us with, if you use a 3PL like ShipBob or some of these more standard ones, um, you can use that to like assist your support reps or even say like update customers on like specific timelines because you can pull from the Shippo API and then founders actually will use Alloy um, in the early days. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. Um, before we let you off, we're just going to uh, do a special giveaway. So Alloy has put up a uh, Google Home, another great prize. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll through here, see what we come up with. All right, lucky winner of the Google Home is Michaela Moulton from truecable.com. Um, congratulations, Michaela, you're walking home with a Google Home courtesy of Alloy. Thanks again, Sarah, for joining us and just wanna bring everybody up, all the other speakers to the stage. Just wanna give everybody a, a special thank you, all our presenters, you know, taking time out of your busy schedules to put together a webinar and putting up with me for 90 minutes. I know that's not easy. And obviously wanna thank all of the, the people who tuned in with us today for taking time out of your busy day. So thanks to everybody. Awesome, cool. All right, well, um, that's it for us. Thanks so much for tuning in. The next webinar that we have is actually this coming Tuesday. It's on how to prepare for the future of fashion and apparel and e-commerce. We'll be joined by partners Yapo, Tapcart, Sezzle, and Gatsby. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Until next time, uh, have a great one. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thanks, Thanks y'all. Take care.